Yeah, I usually tell my patients it's pronounced Anderson. I'm part of the lost Scandinavian tribe. I have no disclosures. I'm a surgery resident. Uh, John Gould, my PI, is a consultant for Thorax Medical. Frailty is not the same as normal aging. It's a measure of physiologic reserve, vulnerability to increasing uh, physiologic stressors. We know that uh, frailty is recognized as an important predictor of healthcare outcomes, and there's no standardized uh, clinical tool to assess frailty that's applied universally. Frailty might help explain why some older patients fare better while others fare worse after procedures. Frailty has been described in, with different models. Uh, the two major models are the physical phenotype, which is used in geriatric medicine, looking at things as exhaustion, uh, weight loss, etc. The second, usual, used in clinical studies uh, in surgery has been this multi-domain aggregate model, uh, the backbone being the Canadian Health Study Based Index. However, these models are cumbersome and are hard to apply in real-time situations to make patient decisions. Researchers have then developed this 11 item frailty index, which is a modification of the accumulating deficits model. This model was designed for the Nisquip data set, and it's a map of the 70 item Canadian study based index to the variables found in the Nisquip data set. Researchers have utilized this to study surgical problems, uh, and we recently utilized it to study frailty as it relates to parasophageal hernia outcomes. However, what we noted looking at the most recent NISQIP data file was that the majority of patients were missing variables, and partly this has to do with the NISQIP program changing year after year, where we see that they now capture over 300 variables, and it is impractical to think that we can consistently capture all these variables per patient. We hypothesized then that maybe using a condensed frailty index might allow us to be able to assess frailty in this cohort. This would increase our sample size, allow us to have a more condensed index to apply in real-time decision-making, as well as study rare conditions uh, such as parasophageal hernia. We queried the NISQIP data set looking at the most recent file, 2011 to 2013, focusing on patients 60 years or greater that had undergone parasophageal hernia repair. An 11 item frailty index that we recently did in a previous paper was mapped to this new condensed five item frailty index. We included five variables out of those 11 that were consistently captured by NISQIP data, which was 84% of the time and the six notorious variables that were excluded were those that were largely missing. And you can see by the years how those variables were missing. On the left side here, you can see the variables in the 11 item index. On the right side, we've got the new five condensed variables. If a patient had all five of these, they would have a frailty score of five. As we move along here, we assessed how the five item data compared to the 11 uh, data, and we assessed the relationship to see if there was an agreement between these indexes. We looked at post outcomes at 30 day stage, and these are listed below. We then determined the relationship between frailty and outcomes and compared the 11 point data to our existing 11 item frailty data. By way of patient characteristics, we ended up including 84% of patients in the new condensed index versus only 20% that were in the 11 uh, item index. Majority of patients were laparoscopic cases, non-emergent uh, setting. When we assessed agreement, there was a strong agreement between the two indexes. A weighted kappa value of 0 0.8, one being implying a perfect agreement and the confidence interval and the p-values are noted. Patient outcomes at the 30-day mark are listed here. Grade three or greater clavian dindo complications were about 6%, mortality 1.2%, discharge to a place other than home, 8.8%, and readmission 
was at 7.8%. To orient you to this uh, figure, on the x-axis, we've got a frailty index score. A frailty score of three or greater is considered high frailty. The rate is on the y-axis. So when we looked at clavian dindo complications, we focus first on the dark graphs, which is the five item index, compared to the light graphs at the 11 point index, our existing data. We saw that at the score of two, that was significant relative to a score of zero. Same with the high frailty cohort index, that was significant compared to a score of zero. And this trend showed that as frailty increased, the rate of complications increased. And this data was consistent with the 11 point data in our existing uh, data. When we look at mortality, we saw a similar trend. However, what this data showed, in the condensed index, we had statistically significant data relative to the 11 point index that failed to reach statistical significance. And this was due to a low N value. Next, discharge destination to a place other than home. We saw again a similar trend of increasing outcome relative to frailty score. When we look at the high frailty cohort, I've got the double stars here indicating that for this data, the high frailty index cohort was also statistically significant compared to the prior score. And lastly, with readmission, we saw a similar trend. Readmission data was significant in the five frailty index cohort, which was not the case in the 11 index cohort, again, due to a low N value. Hence, as we look at our conclusions, our data demonstrates that there is an agreement between the five item and the 11 item index. Frailty correlates to outcomes following parasophageal hernia. Utilization of this five item condensed index significantly increases the sample size. And as you saw, it allowed for significance to be achieved in the readmission and mortality data. However, this is a new uh, index that we are proposing and further validation is needed uh, by studying it prospectively and also applying it to other disease conditions within the NISQIP data set and other uh, large patient population data sets. The bottom line of what we are doing here is we feel that understanding frailty will help us take better care of our increasingly aging population where we see a higher frailty cohort. And this will help us understand how each adult patient in, this, in the frail cohort tends to be vulnerable to physiologic stressors, surgery being one of those. Again, thank you for this opportunity. I'll take any questions.